Shrek. On the surface, a film about an ogre thrust into a perilous journey to save a princess, shake off a donkey and restore his humble swampy abode to its peaceful and solitude state before it is ransacked by hundreds of fairy tale creatures. But beneath the surface, when you peel back Shrek's oniony layers, you'll find an ogre desperate to break free from the chains of his own mind. An ogre whose initial beliefs force him to live within the confines of all society deems an ogre can be. Yet Shrek spends the entire film defying these same expectations and learning that only by accepting our faults, our undesirable traits, the very worst of ourselves, can we begin the journey towards becoming the very best. That what the world believes an ogre is doesn't define him. Shrek accepts his ogreness. Shrek is about the journey of an ogre on the path to becoming who he is always meant to be. And along the way we learn that ogre nature and human nature are not so different after all. To embrace who you are, you must accept all facets of the self. It's not enough to simply embrace the good, the valuable, or the positive about yourself. To embody true self-acceptance, you must also embrace the less desirable, the negative, and the ugly parts of yourself. Accepting all the negative aspects of yourself could be one of the most difficult journeys in life. That's why many people live their lives in the confines of their own minds, unable to break free from the traits, conditions, or characteristics that we believe define us. Too afraid to face them for what they are, a real part of us. Most people never embrace who they truly are. As Shrek finds out, it's not easy to accept the things that we desperately want to change about ourselves, like being a great big scary ogre. Shrek has such difficulty accepting the fact that he's an ogre that he spends his entire life devoted to playing the role of one just that he believes he can fit in. Convinced that if he didn't stay true to ogre nature that he'd be worse than just an ogre, he'd be nothing at all. It's only by truly accepting ourselves that we can even begin the process of meaningful self-improvement but we must first acknowledge that we have undesirable traits and habits in the first place. Only then can we move past these anchors that have for so long held us back. Anchors like our obsession of fixating on how our undesirable traits define us, not the traits themselves, and not only move forwards, but in some cases use these traits to our advantage, like Shrek utilises his big ugly ogre stature to scare away the soldiers in order to save Donkey. Shrek's societal pressures are people's opinions of him, the attitude of what an ogre is and what they are capable of. He accepts his perceived nature because that's what he's told he is. He is an ogre, therefore he must be brutish, selfish and a solitary creature who rejects friendships and community. Shrek's inner struggle lies within who he is. Deep down what Shrek enters the film wanting more than anything is a self-acceptance of who he is. He spends his life trying to fill a role that the world perceives an ogre to be in a desperate attempt to find peace with who he is. That he has somehow lived up to the expectation of what an ogre should be. But his misbelief is what makes an ogre truly an ogre is living in complete solitude, refusing any kind of interconnection with others, and stalking the outskirts of his swamp, devouring all those who dare enter his abode. Shrek believes that the only path towards self-acceptance is to fit the archetype of what the world considers an ogre to be. Only then can he find his place in it. But what Shrek needs to realise is that attempting to fit the cookie cutter mould of what he thinks an ogre has to be will only compound his misery, because this defies everything he really wants. We see examples of this throughout the film. Shrek has low self-esteem throughout the story referring to himself as a scary, ugly and stupid. There is no more pertinent example of this than when Donkey pesters Shrek to open up about why he builds walls to keep people out, to which Shrek replies, Look, I'm not the one with the problem, okay? It's the world that seems to have a problem with me. People take one look at me and go, Ah, help, run! A big, stupid, ugly ogre. They judge me before they even know me. Shrek is stuck in a perpetual cycle of being torn apart by his want and misbelief, of wanting to be at peace with who he is, but not believing the world will accept it. At pivotal points in the story, the theme poses questions to Shrek. He reluctantly saves Donkey from a questionable mythical slave sale, which eventually culminates in Donkey leading Shrek to see Lord Farquaad. This forces Shrek to confront his fear of companionship. For much of the film, Shrek rejects Donkey is anything more than an annoying nuisance to tolerate, but we watch as gradually he opens up to Donkey. Then, when Shrek is confronted by the great dragon guarding the princess, with its wall of jagged teeth and fierce yellow eyes, he doesn't for one moment believe that anything but brute strength can overcome it. That is until Donkey shows Shrek that even something so monstrous, something that's for so long lived in solitude as a dangerous, all-devouring creature, can fall in love and be accepted. We then have Princess Fiona, who wipes the floor with Robin Hood and his men, showing as Fiona herself remarks the age-old cliché, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Fiona's physical capabilities also allude to the fact that she was capable of escaping the tower all along, 
but she was blinded by the stereotype of being a helpless princess. Shortly after this, Shrek begins to fall for her, but worries that someone like Fiona could never love someone as ugly as him. But as Shrek torments himself with these thoughts, we realise that, unbeknownst to him, every nightfall Fiona transforms into an ogre herself. This insight shows the audience that Shrek's misbelief of not believing he could be loved because of who he is was all in his head, after all. The societal expectations, stereotypes and perceptions of all that an ogre could be distorted what Shrek believed was possible, restricting him to the confines of what everyone else deems an ogre can be, when in reality we all have that ogreness inside of us, those undesirable qualities we wish we didn't have. Even those we perceive as being perfect have their own ogre within them, their own discernible and undesirable traits and characteristics we all believe are unique to us and give only us a disadvantage. The fact that Shrek came so close to discovering Fiona's secret highlights how hidden in plain sight her openness was. And this led to Shrek believing that every time Fiona refused to see Shrek, it was because of the problems Shrek had with himself, when in actual fact it was Fiona trying to hide her openness from him. We all have our own faults and weaknesses that we're too afraid to show the world, too scared to embrace, but that if we were only able to accept, we could move past and propel us into becoming the very best versions of ourselves. Then, after Shrek crashes Fiona and Lord Farquhar's wedding, their true love's kiss breaks the spell and cements Fiona's form as an ogre forever, where Shrek tells her she looks beautiful. Here we gain insight not only into Shrek's new perspective, that even ogres can be beautiful, but also that Fiona has not only accepted the traits Shrek considered to be so damning, like being an ogre, but that Fiona wants to harness these traits for the rest of her life. As Shrek watches the transformation of Princess Fiona, he learns definitively that there is no set formula that can define what an ogre is. That if he can only accept himself, his true self as the ogre he is, he can break free from the spell he cast upon himself. Finally, as we return to the swamp, we see the transformation of a once lonely, isolated ogre, condemned to a lifetime of seclusion, to one surrounded by friends and the people that he loves. An ogre whose journey had thrust upon him many trials and tribulations, all forcing him to confront the very things he believed were least ogre-like of all. Friendship, love, heroism, and that the only true obstacles in this journey towards becoming the very best version of himself was just that, himself. This very same theme of becoming is reflected in the secondary characters that surround our protagonists as well. Princess Fiona navigates the story by defying the expectations of what many would consider a helpless princess to be. Yet when Shrek first enters the tower, she goes as far as pretending to be asleep, awaiting her true love's first kiss. She's playing this role of a fairy tale cliche down to a T, wasting her life at the mercy of societal expectations, too afraid to break free from the chains of her own mind until Shrek physically rips her away from them when he rescues her from the tower. Only once Fiona is thrust into chaos can she finally harness the more aggressive, carnal, unprincess-like traits that she has for so long repressed, until she's finally able to accept them as a fundamental part of her being, when, just like Shrek, she accepts the ogre inside of her. There, she finally sheds the outer layers of dependency and vulnerability that had for so long confined her to the prison of her tower, and finally becomes who she was always meant to be. And then finally we have the beloved Donkey, a pivotal cog in Shrek's story whose passion for making friends showed Shrek that someone was truly willing to accept him for who he really was. But Donkey was also held back by the confines of what the world believed a donkey to be, a coward. Afraid of danger, fearful of the unknown, it was only by being thrust into peril by Shrek that he was finally able to face his fears and realise that they didn't define him. The personification of Donkey's entire journey can be found in two scenes. The first is the scene in which Shrek and Donkey initially encounter the rickety bridge. While Shrek understands that this bridge is the only entrance to the castle, and only by facing this danger head on can they ever hope to save the princess, Donkey is petrified. He's terrified of falling, afraid of everything that could go wrong, and it's only after Shrek pushes Donkey across the bridge that he realises what he's truly capable of, and that this is all possible thanks to his passion for making friends. The second is Donkey's encounter with the dragon, the ultimate mythical depiction for our fear of the unknown, and where in contrast Shrek used brute force to overcome the dragon, Donkey utilised what he knew best, his passion for making connections with others, and ended up falling in love with the dragon. In both scenes we realise Donkey was able to overcome the confines of his inherent fear of life, not by charging headstrong into battle, but by doing what he does best, making friends. He accepts that although alone he may not be the bravest or most unrelenting Donkey, when surrounded by his friends he is the most heroic Donkey in the world. Ultimately, Shrek is a journey of becoming who you're always meant to be, a lesson on why we must accept every facet of ourselves as valuable parts of our existence the best and the worst. Shrek shows us why the answer to who we are will never derive from how others perceive us, from what society deems we should and shouldn't be. 
Shrek achieves fulfilment from defying everything humans perceive an ogre to be. From not merely accepting that he is ugly and feared, that he must cower away in the confines of his swamp because he is too terrifying to ever form meaningful connections with others. Instead, Shrek realises that he isn't too ugly to be loved, too terrifying to befriend, or too monstrous to be a hero. He was able to finally love and accept who he was and find happiness in his humble swampy abode because he defied these expectations, accepted his undesirable traits as being a part of himself, and became the ogre he was always meant to be. He found his true ogre nature, something humans could learn a lot from. Society is constantly changing, social norms and values along with it, and the way in which we react to these changes as individuals can shape our very being. Whether it's social media or Hollywood, we are in a perpetual cycle of anti-masculine messaging by caricaturing men as bumbling, bone-headed idiots, anti-feminine messaging by churning out characters like Ray and Galadriel, the caricature of women as having no flaws or inner struggles to deal with and accept in life. Both messages are incredibly harmful if internalised by individuals within a society. On the other hand, you'll end up with men too weak and emotionally unstable to function in a competitively driven society. And on the other, you'll have women that lose the opportunity to become the very best versions of themselves because they are told society will always accept them as they are, that they don't need to accept their flaws or overcome struggle and improve because they are perfect in every way. This theme can be extrapolated further. Whether it's the ever-looming threat of being censored or cancelled for wrongthink, the sexual marketplace and dating, Stereotypes and societal expectations have been established and applied to every kind of feature and combination of features. From gender to race, from height to weight, from disability to upbringing. Now more than ever we are being watched, nitpicked and scrutinised over our every word, opinion, action and behaviour. More than ever society want people crafted from a cookie cutter mould. More than ever we need to realise our flaws and accept them as a part of who we are. More than ever we need people to become oneself. A journey to self discovery starts right here. Because as we have learned, just like ogres, humans have layers. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, consider dropping a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.